Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the service of Holy Eucharist. And I want to welcome all of those of you who are watching online and particularly those who are in retirement communities or in the hospital today or in rehab. Know that we are thinking of you. You are in our prayers and we are so glad that you are worshiping with us. Our service continues on page 355 of the prayer book. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. reading from the prophecy of Jonah. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said a while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you were a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. <coughs> the Lord God appointed a bush, and it came up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. 
When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second lesson is from, Ch from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. To me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two, my desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a wor manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had and now here that I still have. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went, and when he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last wicked, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be the first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Christ. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, Jonah. God loved Jonah. Do you not have to just love that man? Here he is, called to go and speak to the Ninevites. And what does he do? Well, first you have to know that we, we don't know much about him, and we don't know if he was ever called into service as a prophet. We only know from a reference in Kings that he was the son of Atai and that he is a prophet. But he wasn't a prophet like our other prophets who generally went to, into Israel and spoke to God's people. No, God has called him to go to Nineveh, the capital of Assyria. And he wants no part of this. He wants absolutely no part of this. And so rather than head toward Nineveh, he goes to the dock, gets a ticket, gets on a boat, and heads to Tarshish, the opposite direction. Well, you know, you can run, but you can't hide from God. And such was the case of Jonah. He gets out. He, they're out in the water in the sea, and the waves are pounding. There's a terrible storm, and he knows. He knows that this is God, that God is speaking to him because he is not going where God called him to go. He is not where he is supposed to be. And so Jonah goes and he speaks to the sailors, and to the sailors, Gosh, we have to, I don't know, to their good, for, not to their good fortune, but to their better sense of judgment when he says, look, I'm going to have to go overboard because this is about me. One of, the, one of the times when somebody thought this is about me and it really was about them, it was about Jonah. And so they're like, no, 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 you stay here. And Jonah said, no, this is about me. I got to go. And so finally, Jonah gets thrown overboard. 
And lo and behold, this big fish comes along and swallows up this man. And for three days, he's in the belly of this man, and Jonah begins to pray. Well, about this time, this big fish, which we always refer to as a well, at least that's the way it was in my Sunday school class. Was it that way in your Sunday school class? They had those felt boards. Do you remember those felt boards and those pictures of little Jonah and the big well, big well, little Jonah. And so anyway, they get near land and out comes Jonah. And so God's not done with him yet. He still has been called to go to Nineveh. And he doesn't want to go because what he knows God is a gracious God. He believes God, I mean, at least that's what scripture tells us, that he believes that his God is a gracious God and he's merciful and he's slow to anger and he's abounding in steadfast love. Those words again, steadfast love, that describes the character of our God, steadfast love. He believes that, and so, but God wants to offer, isn't offering to punish them. He wants to love on the Ninevites. And Jonah is a law and order kind of guy, and he wants them to suffer because they have done the Israelites wrong and they have gone in the wrong direction. But you know what, Jonah, when, so Jonah goes, okay God, I get it, I'm going to Nineveh, I'm going. He starts walking, he gets there, and he says five words, 40 days, something like Nineveh to be overthrown, that's six. Nineveh to be overthrown. And the king hears this, orders a, that everyone be covered with sackcloth, including the animals, and repent. And Jonah is just mad, and he's sitting under a tree, waiting, watching to see what happens, and God says, I'm gonna show a little mercy to this person who has not been very merciful to other people. I'm gonna show a little mercy. I'm gonna give him a shade tree. Well, as you heard in the scripture, the next day the shade tree is gone. The tree has disappeared, or at least it's not, uh, we don't have leaves covering him anymore, and he's hot, and he's upset, and he's really concerned. What happened to this tree? How did this tree die overnight? And God says to him, Jonah, you're concerned about this one little tree that you did not create, you did not nurture. I'm concerned about 120,000 people I created. Is it not up to me? to care for my people. Is it not up to me? So why are you angry? Well, we hear a similar story in the Gospel of Matthew when someone gets paid the same amount as those who have worked more hours. And again, God asks, what right do you have to be angry? I can choose. I can choose to be merciful, and we know our God is merciful. And it makes no sense. There is nothing about God's grace that makes sense. Nothing about it makes sense. God's love is everlasting, and it's for all of us. There's a story that you may have heard a few years ago. It was on a podcast for NPR. Um, and it was by a man by the name of Ro Michael Rabideau. I don't know Michael Rabideau, but Michael Rabideau and his wife and 14-year-old daughter were in their backyard having a celebratory dinner, and there were eight people there. And all of a sudden, as they have this nice French wine and this beautiful meal. They finish their meal, they're just savoring their wine, and all of a sudden, they see this gun pointing in their group. And suddenly, everyone gets quiet. And this man steps up, and he says, give me your money. Well, you know, very few people carry money anymore, and so none of them had any money. And he's pointing the gun at one of the women, Christine, 
and saying, give me your money. And she's like, we don't have any money. We don't have any money. And, fi- and then Christine asks or says, we're having a celebratory dinner. Would you like a glass of wine? Would you like to join us? And suddenly the man's face changes. It suddenly softens. And with that, he takes a glass of wine. And they said, well, here's some cheese and crackers. He puts his gun in his pocket and takes some cheese and crackers. And much to their surprise, he then asked Christine, who had offered him the wine, will you hug me? And she said, certainly. And so she hugs him, and somebody else hugs him. And then, again to their surprise, he asks, can we have a group hug? And they are totally shocked. And again, surprised, they hear this man say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. And the festive dinner guests say, it's okay. We all make mistakes. It's okay. It's okay. If the, he takes his wine and he walks back out the front gate. And later, after they've sort of all collected themselves and sort of reviewed what the evening had been and how differently it could have gone, can you imagine if someone in that group had had a gun with them? Can you imagine how differently this night would have gone? But no, they had something way more powerful. They had the grace of God in the power of the Holy Spirit who suddenly spoke to that group and said, show this man love. Show this man love. Does he deserve love from us? Are you kidding me? He's just broken up our party with a gun in our face? Yes, he deserves our love because that's the way God has loved us. That's the way our God has shown us mercy and we have all erred. And you know, Jonah, God bless Jonah. Here he has been disobedient to God, but yet he wants God to punish the Ninevites and totally overlook his transgression. It's not up to us to decide who God's going to show mercy to and to show grace. That's up to God. We're only called to live the life God has called us to live. And that is following in the footsteps of God, in, of Jesus Christ, and showing our love to everyone. And what we hear in the story by Michael Rabideau is Pentecost grace. That's what it is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When we least expect it, the Holy Spirit will give us what we need and will give those around us what they need. I don't know what happened to that man. The story doesn't say. But that night, he experienced grace. My guess is that changed his life. And I know reading that story and hearing that story changed my life. And I hope that all of us will always remember that God's grace is greater than any transgression. That God loves us, God welcomes us, and God forgives us, no matter what we have done. God always walks with us. Will we walk with God? Amen. At this time, I would like to invite our Altar Guild and Flower Guild members to please come forward for a commissioning. Altar Guild and Flower Guild, and we have a insert, and would they bring, would everybody bring your insert with you when you come forward?
Okay, and I understand that we have some new Alter Guild members who are not on this list. All right, great. Well, welcome. So we have Brad and Susan and Cece joining our Alter Guild. Yay. And I just want to say, if there's anybody else, it's not too late. Just come on down. We, uh, the Alter Guild can always use some extra hands. And I'm standing in for my best thing or he couldn't be here today. Oh, okay, wonderful. God love this congregation. <laughs> We're always here for each other. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we are all baptized by the one spirit into one body and given gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. Our purpose is to commission these persons in the name of God and of this congregation to a special ministry to which they are called. Are these persons you are to present prepared by a commitment to Christ as Lord, by regular attendance at worship, and by the knowledge of their duties to exercise their ministry to the honor of God and the well-being of this church? I believe they are. You have been called to a ministry in this congregation. Will you, as long as you are engaged in this work, perform it with diligence? Will you faithfully and reverently execute the duties of your ministry to the honor of God and the benefit of the members of this congregation? I will. I present to you these, these persons to be admitted to the ministry of the altar and flower guilds in this, con in this congregation. Thank you. The Levites were responsible for the ark, the table, the lampstand, the altars and the vessels of the sanctuary with which the priests minister. In the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory. Holiness, Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, Lord, forever. Let us pray. O God, you accepted the service of Levites in your temple, and your son was pleased to accept the loving service of his friends. Bless the ministry of these persons and give them grace that they, caring for the vessels and vestments of your worship and the adornment of your sanctuary, may make the place of your presence glorious. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of God and of this congregation, I commission you as members of the altar and flower guilds of this parish. Congratulations. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you for this ministry. You know, the ministry of the Altar Guild and the Flower Guild uh, guilds are probably two of the most least frequently seen of all the ministries in the church because they come in sometimes at O Dark 30 to get the altar ready and sometimes they're coming in at O Dark 30 to take it down and to change out the linens and to make sure that we always have enough wine and wafers and beautiful flowers on the altar and so we thank you all for that ministry. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God is a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger and rich in mercy, generous and forgiving to all who cry for grace. With confidence, let us turn to our God in prayer, saying, Lord, have mercy. For people throughout the world who are suffering at this very hour from drought and famine, from economic distress and social disruption, from violence and war, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church throughout the world, that we, together with all our brothers and sisters in Christ, may be effective agents of social transformation and reliable messengers of hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our own country, that its wealth and power might become a force for peace rather than conflict a source of hope rather than discontent, an agent of friendship rather than enmity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our own community, and especially for those among us who are dispirited and brokenhearted, who find no hope or meaning or purpose in life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and troubled, especially Patty, Elizabeth, Annies, Deborah, Joyce, Dennis, Don, Marie, Jim, Joan, Buck, Alicia, Bev, Chuck, John, Miranda, Joanna, Elsie, Alice, Phil, Sherry, Ed, Gail, Grace and Jonathan, Richard, Mike, Jennifer, Kim, Trina, Jill, David, Geraldine, Alan, Hilary, Mary Jo, Ginny, Robin, Thomas, Caitlin, Gwen, Chester, Gail, Annie, Yannick, Jimmy, Liz, Savvy, Grace, George and Lynn, Caroline, John, Richard, Barbara, Kevin, Nancy, Bishop Michael, Kevin, Stephanie, Dave, and those who minister to them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, in your presence none of us can boast, and all must ask for mercy. Yet your Son has embraced us, and called us to share in his labours for the salvation of every man, woman, and child. Grant us the grace to see what needs to be done and the wisdom and resources to do it through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm sorry to... um to report that Keith Cummings' wife, Sherry, died this week. And it's my understanding that she had been sick and it was anticipated that her death was imminent, but not quite as imminent as it is, as it was. Um, Keith uh, has gone to the Eastern Shore, to their home there, where Sherry was, is, and um, at a later time there will be um, a service, I believe, maybe in Pennsylvania. Please keep Keith and his son, Wren, in your prayers as they get through these weeks and make the preparations necessary for 
to say goodbye to his wife and Ren's mother. And let us pray. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Sherry. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Our service will continue with the confession of sin on page 360 of the prayer book. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in peace. Are there birthdays or anniversaries? Peace be with you, Imogen. Birthdays or anniversaries? Birthday. Oh, is this an anniversary? Anniversary, yay, okay. Here, yeah, do you want to lean on the, put your hand here? I'm good. Kind of there we go. Okay. Okay. Now. okay. And how many years is this? Eleven. Eleven years. All right. Oh God, let us pray. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon Hillary and Will that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience and wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and may God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. And the Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace, that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. Congratulations. So. Okay, I have, um, I have several announcements and I'm gonna try to be brief. And several of these things will be in the e-news. If you do not get the e-news, please let me know after the service or contact the office um, because most of our news is filtered through the e-news that comes out. Okay, um, today at coffee hour, there will be a discussion on creation care with Ken Fortino, and I hope that you all will stay for coffee hour to participate in that. This week, um, our parish secretary, Cleo, is on vacation. Actually, she does not come back until October 4th, and so four uh, of you have kindly volunteered to be in the office on the days that Cleo would generally be there, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. However, their hours will be reduced. They will only be there from nine to three. So if you need something in the office, please contact the office before you go in to be sure that somebody, either one of our volunteers stepping in for Cleo or Bill will be in the office. 
Next week, we will be re recognizing our lay Eucharistic ministers, those who serve at the altar. And again, it's not too late. If you feel that you are called to that ministry, please speak with me. Also, next week at 11 o'clock, Syra, the church that is um, out in Buckingham, I believe it's Buckingham, am I correct on that? Or Cumberland? It's in Cumberland. Syra is an old parish that closed a number of years ago, but they have essentially remained open by having one service a year. And so next Sunday is that one service, and Bishop Susan will be there. There will be a confirmation, and somebody from our parish will be uh, confirmed there. Um, and, um, and so if I know over the years, some of you have faithfully gone out to Syrah for that service. And so please, if that's something you are interested in, uh, the service is at 11 o'clock. They're planning a picnic afterwards, and um, they just ask that people bring a covered dish for that. In the afternoon and next Sunday at 5 p.m., we will be participating in the blessing of the animals with Farmville United Methodist Church, and we will be collecting items and donations for the Southside SPCA, and they have specific items that they're they're collecting, and so we will post that on the E News and on our website, so you will know the specific things they're asking for. On October 7th is the Interfaith Collective Dinner at the Downtown Plaza. And November 1st is Bishop Susan's visit to Convocation 8. Our bishop made a commitment when she came to the diocese to get out and about and to meet all of the congregations and to be available to parishioners and to clergy. And so if you would like to meet Bishop Susan, if you feel there's something you want to talk with her about, um, she will be in um, South Hill on November 1st. November 5th is All Saints Sunday, and we will do a blessing over our stewardship collection at that time. And I want to encourage you, if you, you will be receiving, if you haven't received it yet, a letter regarding stewardship for 2024. And it's really important um, that those forms get filled out and get turned around as quickly as possible and returned to the church. Um, we have been blessed generously um, by God in so many ways, and we give out of gratitude for those gifts that we've been given. So I hope that you will be generous and that you will get your form in. You can also do this online, and then on November the 5th, we'll do a blessing of all of the commitment forms we've received to date. On November 11th, Veterans Day, there will be people ringing um, our bell and ringing bells locally at 11 o'clock if you are interested in ringing the bell on November the 11th. Um, Margaret Lindsay will be coordinating that effort. And our annual meeting is on November 12th, and at that time we will review our budget and thank our uh, vestry members who are going out and welcome and elect new vestry members. And if you feel called to the ministry of the vestry, please let me know or let um, our senior warden, Steve Libby, know that, um, that you feel so called. I want to thank our senior warden, Steve Libby, for I understand we had a large branch fall on our property and that he took care of that yesterday for us. And we thank you for that, Steve. The, the Ministry of Buildings and Grounds is a big ministry, and it's another one that frequently we don't see people in their work, but, um, but we are most grateful for all of you who do contribute to that ministry and to keep our, our physical um, site, uh, our buildings and our grounds in such beautiful condition, so thank you for that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Great Thanksgiving will continue with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. The congregation may stand or kneel or sit as you are comfortable. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us now in temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Turning to page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and go to coffee hour. Whoa, whoa, hey.